Welcome to the coming apocalypse. Evangelist and pastor Paul Bagley will take you on a journey into the end times prophecy. He'll examine current world events and explain how they relate to the end times. For decades, Pastor Bagley has provided people all over the world with an understanding of today's world events from a biblical perspective. Now, here's your host, Pastor Paul Bagley. Welcome to the coming apocalypse. I'm Pastor Paul Bagley, and today's broadcast, we're going to talk about the Ancient of Days. Oh, yes. I mean, think about it. Who is Alpha and Omega, the beginning, the end, the first and the last? Who is the one that spoke the world of existence, created the magnificent constellations, put the earth spinning on its axle, exactly orbiting around the sun, where we need to be to have such a beautiful, beautiful planet that we have? Who is it that brought life into the world, gave you an opportunity to breathe, to be here, to be a living soul, to experience the joy and the, and the, the laughter And the life itself, well, it's the life giver. It's the Ancient of Days. He was here before me. He'll be here after me, but he'll always be with me. I'll be right back in just a moment. I have a book called Mark of the Beast, RFID, a powerful illustration of the last days. It is filled with biblical prophecy, current world events, and an end-time apocalyptic scenario. This novel will keep you on the edge of your seat 18 things I wrote has come to pass, including that Pope Benedict would resign. Get a copy of it right now. It's amazing. Mark of the Beast at my website. All right, all right. The Ancient of Days. Well, that's uh, without question we know who he is. It's the father, the creator of all things. But did you understand that Daniel brings us up in a powerful vision of the end times? and makes reference to the Ancient of Days, and he has to, because there's going to be four last, the Bible talks about four great kingdoms. Now, there's debate in the hermeneutics of the eschatology of exactly who these four kingdoms may be, but I like to look at it my way. Uh, Why not, right? It's my show, but uh, (laughs) these four kingdoms are certainly playing a role in the end times, and I think when I look at things, we are in that end times, that Daniel, when he got this revelation, he was told to seal it up and wait till John would get it and he would reveal it out in the book of Revelation. Let's go to Daniel chapter 7 for a moment. Take a look at what happens here. Uh, First of all, the Ancient of Days is mentioned in verse 9 when Daniel says, And I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the Ancient of Days did sit, whose garment was white as snow, and the hair of his head like pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. So what Daniel saw was he was visualizing in this vision God the Father sitting on the eternal throne of mercy and grace with power uh, that was so spectacular, you know, that it was hard to describe, really. But any time you you hear about... Uh, the Lord, and, and, and all through Revelation, talks about, you know, his brightness. You know, the Bible says that Jesus would destroy the devil with the brightness of his coming. And I think Christ even said these words. He said, as lightning goes from the east to the west, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. So, but even the devil would like to try to get in on the act. So it says that even Lucifer will uh, transform himself into an angel of light. In other words, try to be deceptive, be illuminating, uh, try to live off the reflection. But he doesn't have the purity, and uh, and so God does, and only God does. Well, the Bible even says God is light, and in him is no darkness at all. And Jesus said many folks won't come to the light because they love darkness rather than light and won't come to the light, lest their deeds be reproved or reproved corrected. So it's important to understand that the Ancient of Days sitting on his throne uh, is is like his garment was as white as snow, his hair uh, pure, like pure wool, and his throne was like a fiery flame and the wheels like burning fire. Well, let's talk about these four beast kingdoms, though, leading up to this. And let me talk to you about what it says here. Daniel chapter 7, 
Verse 4, the first kingdom was like a lion and had eagle's wings. I beheld till the wings thereof were plucked and it lifted up from the earth and made stand upon the feet as a man and a man's heart was given to it. I, looked, I like to look at this as the British Empire, okay? I know there were many empires before we get to the British Empire, but I look at it this way because I understand we're talking at the end times now. We're coming, this is the stretch run. And so if you look at the lion, of course, it's part of the seal. It's what uh, the British Empire uses as uh, its um, identification. And from this lion, there was these eagle wings, which I believe represents the United States of America. We came from Great Britain. We were the wings, okay, that were plucked off. And we went to create, they called us the colonists for a while, uh, 13 colonies before we became the United States. Now, this is an important point because in the book of Revelation, it'll tell you that when the, when the uh, children of Israel have to flee into the wilderness, in Revelation 12, that it's eagles' wings that cover them. And if you look at today's um, modern situation, you'll see that Israel feels that their divine protection right now from God is being sent to them by way of the United States. The eagle is soaring over. We're protecting them in their airspace, and we're, and we're standing with them. And I think it's very significant because that's the only time you see this in the Bible where the, these wings are plucked off in Daniel 7 and they're used to protect Israel in Revelation 12. But let's move on, okay? Look at verse 5. And it says that, and, and behold, another beast, uh, a second like a bear, and it raised up itself on one side and it had three ribs in its mouth of it between the teeth of it and they said thus unto it, Arise, devour much flesh. Now, a, a lot of times throughout the history, Russia is referred to as the bear, the northern army, uh, the bear of the north. There are scriptures throughout the Bible. We really believe that this kingdom is representing the, uh, the kingdom of communism that really originates out of Russia with Marx, Karl Marx, Marxism, Stalin, and on. Now, communism spread, of course. We know that it's China's got communism. We know Cuba, North Korea, and there's been uh, North Vietnam. And uh, I mean, there's been several nations that operate in communism or totalitarianism or some type of super socialism, the, which has generally removed God from the picture. Now, Russia did for about 70 years, the USSR. They were a communist nation and Bibles were confiscated. Uh, you know, you could not, churches were closed. All of these things happened, of course, until uh, Mikhail Gorbachev came along and the economy started to collapse on the Russians. And Ronald Reagan stood up and said, Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. We understand that there was the breaking down of that and the, and the liberation of that. And Russia's been working on that ever since and uh, for have freedom of religion, freedom for Christianity, and that have you. But they were certainly a beast kingdom. And even during the time of the next kingdom that rises, which is the leopard, which I believe is representing Germany. Let's look at it. It says here, oh, and oh, by the way, Russia did devour some nations, okay? They did take over some nations. And there you see where the bear ripped the three ribs uh, out, out of in his mouth. Okay, very ferocious. But look at verse 6. And after this, I beheld, and lo, another kingdom. It was like a leopard, which had upon the back of it four wings of a fowl. The beast had also four heads, and dominion was given to it. I really believe that we're looking at uh, Adolf Hitler, the rise of Nazism. I believe this was actually, again, a very fascist Nazism, totalitarianism, brutal uh, empire, tried to exterminate the Jewish people, uh, six million Jews, uh, literally in a genocide, seven million Christians lost their lives as well. Uh, that's rarely talked about. Um, Germany tried to conquer the world. Adolf Hitler was an antichrist, a forerunner, if you will, uh, to the Antichrist, similar to like John the Baptist, a forerunner to Jesus Christ. I believe Adolf Hitler was the forerunner to the Antichrist. He certainly was an Antichrist. He was deep in the occult. He uh, was involved in blood sacrifices. He would bring his 
uh, there was times they would go into the, uh, the, the, the castle there uh, of death and they would sit around up in that upper chamber and it would be Adolf Hitler and 12 of his top generals and they would bring people and sacrifice them on altars. And as the people were being tortured and screaming and the cries were going up, Hitler would reach out and cry to, hit, to Lucifer to give him the battle plan to defeat the Allied forces. This is a, an individual that was deep. Remember, he had the, the spear of Loganus or what's known as the spear of destiny. When he was a little boy, nine years old, living in Austria, he would go every day at four o'clock when the, when the museum would, would get ready to close, an hour to go, then you could get in free that last hour. He would get out of school. He would run to the museum every day, go in at four o'clock for free, and run through the museum straight to the shadow box on the wall that had the spear that was believed to be used to pierce Christ in the side. It's known as the spear of Loganus, or the spear of destiny. And he knew he, he would study it and he would marvel at it. And he did this. He kept doing this till the age of 13 when he said a black mist came out of the shadow box into his heart. These are his words. He studied the occult. He got involved and he kept saying, one day I will have that spear. Now, he knew that uh, Napoleon had had that spear while he was trying to conquer the world. He knew that uh, uh, Constantine, had had that spear. He knew that other dictators and emperors and had had that spear, had been passed around. And there it was, he said, one day it'll be mine. Folks, let me tell you something. Once he became the Fuhrer uh, and, uh, and be, got ready to start World War II, he invaded Austria first, went straight to his town within two weeks and had the Spear of Destiny confiscated and brought to him, of which he kept at his side, thinking it gave him the power. Since the, if this was the Spear, whether it was or not, I don't know, but he believed it was. It had been passed down that it was the Spear. And so he believed that this tangible object gave him the occult power. If this object could be, what in his mind, the, the weapon that may have killed the Messiah, it would give him the power to conquer the world. But I've got news for him. Well, I don't have to tell him. He already knows now. That spear didn't take the life of Christ. The Bible tells you that Christ gave up the ghost. And when they came to Jesus, they, went, they knew that it was the Passover was coming, and they knew they were going to have to get these uh, men off the cross. They, it was against the law to leave them up during the Feast of Passover. They went to break the legs of those that were being crucified so they would die quick. And the two thieves on either side, they broke their legs. But when they came to Jesus, they seen he had already died. No need to break his legs. Fulfilling scripture in the Old Testament said, not a, not a bone of his body will be broken. And when they saw there was no need to break his legs, he had already given up the ghost. He had already given his uh, life up. They just, in, I guess, maybe frustration, who knows, the Roman soldier took that spear of Loganus and pierced Christ in the side. Out of his side came water and blood. Let me remind you of something. When Adam, the first Adam, when he was put in a deep sleep, God removed from him a rib, okay? A birthing took place. A bride came out of his side. Out of the side of Adam came forth a bride. Let me tell you something. When Christ died, out of his side came blood and water or water and blood. In other words, a birthing of what? Christ was birthing his bride, the bride of Christ. Are you serious? Folks, let's, we'll get right back to this. I'll be right back in just a moment. I have a book called Mark of the Beast, RFID, a powerful illustration of the last days. It is filled with biblical prophecy, current world events, and an end-time apocalyptic scenario. This novel will keep you on the edge of your seat. 18 things I wrote has come to pass, including that Pope Benedict would resign. Get a copy of it right now. It's amazing. Mark of the Beast at my website. All right, all right. Okay, grab your Bible. Go to Daniel chapter 7. Let's go look at that verse 9 again. Daniel in this vision says, I beheld till the thrones were cast down, and the ancient of days did sit, whose garment was white as snow. His hair was the, his hair 
uh, and the hair of his head was like the pure wool. His throne was like a fiery flame and his wheels as a burning fire. Now, what thrones are we talking about being cast down? Well, there's four, four kingdoms. First one was the British Empire, the lion. Second one was the bear, the, the, the uh, communist empire of Russia. The third was the Third Reich, okay, uh, of Germany. And the fourth is the New World Order, or the beast, the biblical beast in Revelation chapter 13, the one world government, the biggest, strongest kingdom of them all of the last days, a kingdom that has not come yet, a kingdom that's trying to rise right now, trying to form right now, a global governance of all nations becoming one. And it will also be led by the Antichrist and a false prophet, according to Revelation 13. Look what it says in Daniel 7, 7. After this I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful, terrible, and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. It was diverse from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another little horn, which is the Antichrist, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Now, this fourth kingdom, this beast kingdom, as it says in Revelation, notice something in Revelation 13. We should go there for just a second. So keep your Bible marked in Revelation 7. I mean, excuse me, Daniel 7. And go to Revelation 13. And look what John saw. John said this in Revelation 13, 1. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon his horns were ten crowns, and upon his heads the name blasphemy. Okay, so here we go. Here's those ten horns again. And he said, and the beast which I saw was like a leopard. Uh-oh. Okay, that means it had part of the ideology of the Nazi Germany. And its feet were as the feet of a bear. It had some of the foundation of communism. And his mouth was the mouth of a lion. It's boasted great things like the British Empire did in its day. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. The dragon being Lucifer, the Luciferians, if you will, Satan himself. And I saw one of his heads as it was wounded to death, and his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast. And they worshiped the dragon, verse 4, which gave power unto the beast. And they worshiped the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? Well, let's find out. Go back to the book of Daniel, chapter 7. And now we're going to find out where the Ancient of Days comes in, in Daniel, chapter 7. So we have four beasts the fourth beast being the most vicious of them all. But Daniel, that's what Daniel sees in his vision. But John, in his vision, sees the ten horns. He sees this beast, but he realizes this beast has a little bit of all the others. It's, it's a one-world government. It's a one-world ideology. It's a one-world theology, if you will. Because, and it includes a false prophet who, is, and who brings about this one-world religion that does not include Jesus Christ. It will include every prophet there is, every bits and pieces of every religion, just like the kingdom has bits and pieces of these last great empires. But it will have the, uh, it will speak great swelling words. It will have blasphemy. It's, it's crowns are kings, if they will. The Bible tells you in the book of Revelation that these 10 crowns represent 10 kings. Now, check this out. In verse 8, I considered the horn, the horns, and beheld there came up another among them a little horn, before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots. Behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. And here's verse 9. 
and I beheld till the thrones were cast down. And the Ancient of Days <clears throat> did sit, whose garment was as white as snow, his hair of his head like the pure wool, his throne was like the fiery flame, and his wheels as burning fire. And look at verse 10. And a fiery stream issued before and came forth from before him. Thousands, thousands ministered unto him. 10,000 times 10,000 stood before him. The judgment was set. The books were open. Folks, we've, we've, the world has produced all these empires, all these dark kingdoms, all these great kingdoms, everything that man has ever done. But there's never been a kingdom like the kingdom of God. And, and Christ is going to rule and reign a thousand years upon this planet, the Bible tells us. And uh, there's nothing like it. Who can make war against the beast? I can guarantee you who can. God, the ancient of days, the father, the creator of all things, through his son, Jesus Christ, has the power to conquer uh, the devil, to destroy the works of darkness, to bring down the kingdoms of hell. And, he, and so my confidence, my faith is in the power of God's word. I'm not afraid of the last days. I'm not scared of it. I'm not afraid of it. I'm not, what, what, so what? Remember what Joshua, remember the, uh, when, uh, the, after they got into Canaan and the tribe of Benjamin, uh, every, uh, you know, Joshua was assigning certain part of the land to different tribes. And he told the uh, Benjamites, he told Benjamin, he said, your land's going to be right over here. And they came to him and said, Joshua, wait a minute. Did you see the giants that are over there? I mean, that's the worst. That's the most brutal. You put us, that's the land you're giving us? I mean, those guys are huge. And Joshua's answer is so great. He said, and your God is who? <laughs> that was his answer. And, and so what's your problem? And your God is who? You're focused on the problem instead of, instead of realizing who your father is, who is the ancient of days. So it doesn't matter. Well, Paul, you don't understand. You know, there's problems in, in the governments and there's problems over here and there's issues over there and there's this organization over here and your God is who? Uh, who are you trusting in? Are you trusting on the ancient of days, the one that sits on the throne, the one that casts down the rest of the spirit of darkness, who has the power to conquer hell and its forces? The legions of demons cannot stand in the presence of a God that we serve. Do you remember when uh, Jesus got off the ship? He fed a multitude of people, and then he tried to take a nap. Storm blew up on the Sea of Galilee, so he had to stand up and rebuke the sea and the waves, and they obeyed him. Then when they got off the boat on the other side over by Tiberias, then when he gets off the boat, there's this demoniac, uh, this, this man that's so possessed with demons that he lived among the tombs and he roamed among the tombs and he had superhuman strength and he lived among the dead and, and uh, he ran naked and he cut himself and nobody could control him, much like the zombie apocalypse uh, things that we see today. When people are biting people and uncontrollable power and stripping down naked and, and super. I wrote a book called Zombie Apocalypse and it's a great book because it teaches you about all the different demonic spirits there are and how that uh, you have power over these demons in the name of Jesus. But remember how man couldn't deal with the spirit. Man couldn't deal with these demons until these, this man come in contact with Jesus Christ. The Bible said he ran and fell at Christ's feet and worshiped him. Jesus said to the man, and the demon spoke and said, have you come to torment us before our time? Jesus said, what is your name? And they said, legion, for we are many. And Christ said, cast them out and told them to go. And of course, he threw those demons all into 2,000 hogs that were on the side of a hill that ran down and jumped in the Sea of Galilee and choked in the sea. You see, it doesn't matter how dreadful the devil thinks and how much power Satan thinks he possesses. Your God is greater. Your king is more mightier. Your faith is more powerful. You're serving the ancient of days. And when we come back, we'll bring more about this in just a moment. 
a brand new DVD, Zombie Apocalypse 2. I sat down with L.A. Marzulli and got a first-hand account from Pastor Casper McLeod. This DVD deals with the demonic spirits manifesting in the world today. The zombie craze has certainly caught the eye of Hollywood and movies and TV series, but do you really know what it is? Get the DVD. It's at my website right now. All right, folks. All right. Boy, it's just, I'm telling you what, during the break, I just seen the devil falling down, man. He just falling. He just collapsing like, oh, no, he's going to come back for two more minutes of this. I can't stand it because he can't stand in the presence of the power of the Holy Ghost. And too many times I think we've let the devil, you know what the Bible says? Give no place to the devil. Okay? Draw nigh, re resist the devil. He will flee from you. Draw nigh to God. He'll draw nigh to you. Quit giving the devil position. He doesn't deserve it. He doesn't have the authority. Christ said, behold, I give you power to tread over the serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing by any means shall harm you. Nevertheless, rejoice not that these spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice rather because your name is written down in glory. But not everybody's name is written down in glory. Some of you watching me right now, you're saying, wow, I wanted to know about this end times, but it's still coming down to the fact that I'm not saved. Right. And if you don't get saved, you can't walk in this blessing. Why don't we pray right now? Why don't you ask Jesus Christ to come into your heart right now? Just pray. Father, I want to be set free. I need to get my life together. I need to, I need to make a turnaround right now. I'm repenting of my sins I'm confessing my sins to God. I realize, Lord, that I'm lost. I'm not going to be a hypocrite about it. i got to get things right. I need to change some things. I'm going to stop some areas. I'm, I need to get the sin out of my life. I'm repenting of my sins. I'm confessing my sins to God, and I'm asking Jesus Christ to come into my heart, to come into my soul, to come into my mind. I'm looking to the Ancient of Days. Jesus of Nazareth, thank you. I believe in your name. And so right here and right now, by faith, in God's grace, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost, in Jesus' name, I am saved. I am saved. Praise God. God bless you. You've just made the greatest decision of your life out there. I would love to hear from you. Please, why don't you write me? You know what? Come to my website, publiclyprophecy.com. Just go there, publiclyprophecy.com. We have a daily show every day at 12 noon Eastern. Uh, go to my YouTube channel. Got all kinds of YouTube videos. I'll get you up to speed on all the current world events. Bring a little humor into it. But at the same time, I'm serious. 